Hello, students of Savannah Chatham County. My name is Jennifer Fell, and I am a school counselor at Coastal Middle School, serving sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Um, I've also worked at the elementary level, but the lesson I'm going to do today is really universal. Elementary, middle, high school, even adults, other people in our family can all learn um, and work together on today's lesson. So today, we're gonna talk about grief and loss during the pandemic. Now, many of you, when you hear grief, you might automatically think death. And that is true. Um, grief is something that we go through when we lose a loved one. Um, but grief is a lot more. And so let's start with a few definitions about what grief really is. And as you can see in the bottom left, I've given um, some resources as to where I've gotten these definitions from. So these are just a few. But grief is a noun, and it means deep sorrow, especially caused by someone's death. And so that's really what we just talked about, and that's what a lot of people think about when they think about grief. It is also the internal meaning given to the experience of loss. So it's something we are actually feeling as a result of a loss. It is a natural reaction to loss, and it's both universal and personal. And what that means is, for a lot of us, we have similarities in our grief journey, but for other um, aspects of it is very personal and individualized. And the last definition I have is, grief is a natural response to losing someone or something that's important to you. So let's focus on that something, because that's really what I want to talk about today. Um, now, when... Some of us may have lost a loved one um, during our school closure, our shelter in place, our pandemic that's going on in our country, and I'm so sorry for that. And so what we talk about today definitely applies to you in your grieving process, but grief expands so much further than just death. So let's think about some of the things maybe that we are grieving, some of the things that we have lost during this time of distant learning. Um, our freedom to go. I think that's universal for all of us. We can't just go where we want to go, when we want to go, with who we want to go. Um, we're not able to sit down at a restaurant. We're not able to, um, for a little bit, go to some of the beaches and parks. We're able to do that now. We're not able to go to shopping malls, um, friends, houses, things like that. So we've lost um, a lot of our freedom. Some of us have experienced job loss within our family, which obviously relates to a loss of income. And so our families are having to shift. What does that look like? What does that mean? What adjustments are we going to need to make um, to make up for that lost income? What are we going to do to replace that income? What can we all do um, with that? Access to friends and teachers. Um, you know, we've lost a lot of structure in our day. We are used to getting up getting to school, knowing what our day looks like, knowing what to expect, knowing who we're going to see, when we're going to see them, um, knowing what we're going to do after school, um, knowing that we're going to have breakfast when we get to school, lunch when we get there. And so our structure of our day and the people that we surround ourselves with are no longer there. And that's a huge loss. Uh, for our kindergartners, our fifth graders, our eighth graders, you're losing the last few months of that time um, in a special place. For fifth graders, you spend a lot of time in elementary school, um, and the end of the year is so full of different celebrations and excitement for moving on to that next chapter, um, especially our seniors. They are missing so much. Um, graduation, prom. Now, yes, our school system is doing amazing things with our graduates and for our graduates. It's not traditional. It's not what you expected. It's not what you have planned for for 12 years. So that looks completely different, and it is quite okay um, to be grieving that. Missing your prom, missing those final sports seasons, um, those final performances with your band and your chorus and your drama um, and your other organizations, those are huge losses that um, affect us emotionally. And so um, those are just a few things. Now, outside of the pandemic, um, when we're looking at losses other than death, you maybe want to think about family structure. Sometimes um, our families go through a divorce. We go through a different marriage where we now have a blended family. That looks a lot different. There's a lot of emotions and feelings and loss that go on there. Uh, maybe you move, so you've had the loss of what you were comfortable with, um, what you knew, the friends that you knew, and so loss and grief is so much bigger than death, and I just want to kind of talk about what we're all feeling during this time. So I'm going to show a quick video um, 
Now, it does talk about losing a loved one, um, a few spots, but I want you to think about um, all the things I've just mentioned, and what are some things that are a loss for you and your family right now? What are some things that you are grieving? Maybe you didn't realize till I put it into words that that's what you're feeling. Um, some of us have been feeling really overwhelmed, saddened, frustrated, mad, lonely. Um, some of us are very happy and content, and that's good too. Um, and so maybe you've had a bunch of feelings and you're not really sure um, what it meant. And now that I've said this, you're like, wow, Ms. Fell, that, that's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling a loss. I'm grieving. And so as you watch this video, I want you to think about some of the losses you're having during these last few months um, and kind of focus on that, even though um, it will talk a little bit about the death of a loved one. And so as I get that ready for you, um, just focus on that for me and we'll talk about it in just a moment when we are Listen. finished. There's no right or wrong way to deal with the loss of a loved one. You can expect grieving to be rough, and it's different for every single person. Another important thing, it's not just a matter of coping with loss. It's about coping with change. And that, Wellcasters, takes a lot of time. Today on Wellcast, we're dealing with a pretty difficult subject. How do you deal with the death of a loved one? How do you live your life in the face of a life-changing event? We don't have all the answers. And honestly, you're going to have to work through your pain in your own way, at your own pace. But if you're looking for it, we do have some advice. First things first, you need to remember that grief is a process and not a task. You might have heard of a popular theory that breaks up bereavement into stages. Denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. While you might identify with some or all of these steps, you gotta remember that grief is less like a staircase and more like a roller coaster. There are peaks and dips and they don't always happen in predictable ways. You might feel better for a while and then worse, and that's okay. It's natural to have an uneven journey with your grief. Don't be afraid of the pain. You shouldn't try to stuff your sorrow away into a place where you don't have to deal with it. It's just gonna stay there. In order for you to work through your grief, you're first gonna have to acknowledge that it exists. There are a lot of ways to do this. You might have to be alone for a bit. Maybe you need to write down your feelings in a journal or talk to someone. Do things that make you happy. When you're grieving, it's sometimes difficult to hold on to who you are. After all, so much of your energy is focused on the mourning of your loved one, which is fair, but it's easy to get sucked into a mind space where you can't even remember your former self. We wanna tell you it's okay to take time to do the things that make you feel like yourself and give you joy. Recognize the relationship between the mind and the body. When you're experiencing grief, it's really easy to forget the things that you usually do as a matter of routine. Taking a shower, getting enough sleep, eating. Neglecting your physical health is only gonna take a greater toll on your mental health, which is taking a pretty significant hit right now. So do yourself a favor and do us a favor and make an effort to take care of you. It's what your loved one would want. Reach out. Well, casters, if you take nothing else away from this episode, please remember this. You do not have to be alone in your grief. If your feelings are too overwhelming for you to sort out, that's okay. But go to someone else for help. It can be someone you know, a family member or a friend, or it can be a therapist or a professional who knows how to help people deal with this exact situation that you find yourself in right now. Just the act of talking out loud about your feelings can be incredibly cathartic. Finding someone who can help you sort them and work through them is even better. Tweet us at WatchWellCast, email us at watchwellcast at gmail.com, or leave a comment down below. We'll see you next Okay, so we are going to... Um stop there and get back to my presentation. Um, 
So I want to take a minute. If I was in a classroom, I would normally just say, hey, guys, what um, resonated with you? What was in that video that you could relate to? Um, you know, one thing it talked about was this is a life-changing event. I remember as a young child, my father talking about the day um, John F. Kennedy was shot. And he so vividly remembered every detail of that time. And I was surprised that he was so... Um, much older, and it was a childhood memory when he was in elementary school, and what that looked like. And um, in my lifetime, I talk to my students sometimes about 9-11. And even though it's been so, so many years ago, I remember distinctly where I was, how I was feeling, how the people around me reacted, how we supported each other, what did we do in our community. And so I think this pandemic is going to be that for all of us. We are going to remember this. We're going to remember the details, the feelings, the what happened, the what didn't happen. Um, and these are stories we're going to share for a very long time. So it's a life-changing event. Um, so it is natural and human nature to have, um, like the video said, a roller coaster of emotions. How many of you have felt like you're on a roller coaster of emotions. I know I have. Um, I went from hearing we weren't coming back from spring break to thinking, oh, a few extra days, I'll jump on my computer, um, this will be fine, to, oh my gosh, I got to get my Google Classroom set up, I got to reach out to my kids, um, I've got to post some lessons on my website, I've got to reach out to some of my um, staff members and friends to check on them, to having a couple of weeks of really... Um, chaos and um, uncertainty to a feeling of, hey, I've got this. It's going okay. Um, you know, we can all do this. We're, we're in a good place with this. To hearing that um, we won't be back at school this year. And man, my roller coaster just went off again. And I thought, even though I kind of knew it was a possibility when it was said, um, it was overwhelming. It was emotional. And I can imagine for students, um, we're all feeling it and maybe in a different way because we have lost different things. Different things mean something to us um, more so than others. For some of us, it is that graduation and that prom. For some of us, it's just the friendship. It's our relationship with teachers. It's not going back to the same school we were at. Um, it's kind of not having that closure that a lot of us really need. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of roller coaster emotions. And um, one thing that the video talked about that we'll talk about in just a minute is what can we do about it? Um, first of all, let's talk a little bit about feelings, and then we'll talk about how we're going to help ourselves with those feelings. Um, if I was in a classroom, um, I would ask, is there such a thing as a right or wrong feeling? Um, and a lot of students say yes, a lot of students say no. Um, some think that a bad feeling is anger or sadness or frustration. Um, I say, is there a right or wrong? And yeah, it's right to be polite and understanding and it's wrong to have other feelings. And really my thought on that is there is no right or wrong feeling. There is no bad or good feeling. The feelings that we have are human nature. It's what we're feeling. It's how we're reacting to a situation or an event. Um, so it's not bad or good. It's not right or wrong. What we have to focus on is how are we dealing with those emotions? How are we expressing them? How are we um, getting them out? Um, as the video said, there's some basic things that we have to make sure we're doing for ourselves. We may be... Um, very saddened that we're not back in school, that we're missing out on a lot of things. Um, and it's okay to be sad, to be mad, to feel like, um, you know, you're missing out on a lot of things that other people got, and that's not fair. Um, but, you know, the basic things of we've got to make sure we're getting up. We've got to make sure we're still eating healthy. We've got to make sure we're taking a bath. We're talking to people. We're getting some outside time if we can. Um, we have to manage those emotions in a healthy way. So it's not right or wrong to have different feelings about what's going on. We just have to make sure that um, we're handling them. So how do we handle them? What are some things we can do um, for that? And so um, here's some activities that we're going to talk about. I have a lot of examples, and unfortunately, they're all in my office. And so thankfully, the school system has said, don't go in the buildings. We're keeping them clean and sanitized and safe. So I wasn't able to um, get some of my examples. So um, this part may not be as interesting as it would have been had I had some of my props. Um, but let's talk about some things. And this, this is where it comes in, where I was talking about elementary, middle, high school. We all have these feelings. We all are experiencing loss. We all have some grief. Um, and so these activities are also the same. You can adjust them to the ages that are in your family and where you are and what age you are um, to make it interesting, to make it meaningful, um, and to give you some outlets for your emotions. 
Um, one activity that I absolutely love, I was introduced to it um, when I was, um, I volunteer with Hospice Savannah and their grief, um, and one of the counselors there has feelings graffiti, and it has become one of my most favorite activities. Um, and so basically what you want to do is, since we're at home, we're going we're gonna to use what we have. So if you have crayons, if you have paint, if you have sidewalk chalk, um, figure out what colors you have. And so on a piece of paper... I want you to make a list of those colors. Now, if you're creative and you got some paint and you want to blend um, and make some mauve and light blue and mint, you can, or you can stay with your basics, red and blue and yellow and green. List the colors that you have. And what I want you to do is list feelings that connect with those colors. So maybe red is anger, uh, blue is sadness, yellow is hope or peace, um, green is envy, um, you know, whatever feelings that come to mind. Or if you can work on this as a family, have the family decide on some feelings um, and help you make a list of feelings. So what you're going to do, um, again, what you have, maybe you have uh, paper, maybe you have some extra canvas sitting around. Um, if you're like me, you've done some online shopping, so you might have some um, cardboard boxes or pieces of cardboard you could use. Again, if you have sidewalk chalk and an outside sidewalk, uh, use what you have. And so what I want you to do is take these colors and these feelings and draw about them. You can draw a picture. Maybe um, you're grieving your classroom, the normalcy of being there and being with your teacher and your friends and learning. And you want to draw a picture about that. Um, it can be abstract. It could just be shapes and colors and waves. Um, but use the colors that relate to the feelings that you currently have about that situation. Uh, the other option, and it's in the bottom right hand side of this um, slide, is a mandala. And if you Google mandalas, there are tons of them that you can print out. Um, and it is actually a um, ancient Hindu tradition, and the mandalas um, are supposed to be a period of creativity, a powerful existence, um, a symbol of deeper connection with the self and the universe. So the idea is they're very... Um, are very detailed. And so the idea is that when you're focusing on each little section that makes the bigger picture, that you're kind of tuning into your feelings, you're kind of tuning into yourself, that you're able to block out a lot of what's going on outside of you. I mean, you can really focus on it. So if that's something that um, interests you, Google mandalas, and there's tons of them out there free that you can print. So with this, again, um, it's a broad spectrum of what supplies do you have. And um, generally, I would do this in a group setting. And so when we were done, each person could share uh, their picture and talk about what is it? Why did you choose those colors? How are those feelings relating to the experience we're going through? Um, so hopefully, you can do that with your family. Maybe the entire family wants to do that. And so it also opens up a good discussion about, um, hey, you know, I didn't realize that was affecting you so much. I didn't realize you were that upset about that. I didn't realize you missed that as much as you did. So it gives great conversation. And it may be that you even realize something about yourself that you didn't realize. I didn't realize I was missing it that much. I didn't realize it meant that much to me. Um, and so it's a great discussion. Maybe you can do this with some of your friends um, through online, social media, however you're connecting with each other and share your pictures and drawings um, and meanings and feelings to that. Um, I would normally give you an example because I've done several of these over the year. Again, they're all in my office, so um, I'm sorry it's not a more colorful presentation at this point. Uh, books. Books are amazing. There are tons of books about grief and your grief journey. Um, I went to YouTube, and I typed in these exact words, books on grief read out loud. Um, so there are several books where the author is actually on the YouTube reading the entire book. So if you don't have one in your home, um, try to go to YouTube. Also, don't forget that all students in our school district can have a free account and check out um, ebooks through our public library. So make sure you do that. Um, I'm sure if you could just type in grief um, or loss, something like that, there'll be some that pop up. I would also suggest that you could reach out to the media specialist at your school. Um, I know ours is constantly giving us information about a lot of outside resources that are now offering their services free through the pandemic. So there are a plethora of places that you can get free ebooks right now. So check those out. Um, read them as a family. Read them individually. Find one that's age appropriate for you um, that you feel like you could connect with um, and use the resources that are in there. A memory box is another great thing um, that I've done with students. Again, I'd have one if um, I could have gotten into my office. So you're going to have to use your imagination, which is a good thing too. Um, so 
maybe it's a simple box. When I'm working with students who have lost a loved one, it's about memories of that person. So maybe it's pictures, maybe it's items they have. Um, but maybe you want to make a memory box of your elementary school years, of your middle school years, of your high school years, of all 12 years. Um, maybe it's you're missing, um, I know so many things have been canceled this summer from dance recitals to camps um, that you normally go to. Um, activities, something that are special, church trips. Um, so maybe you take a specific event and you want to make a memory box about all the summers you've gone to that church camp or all the summers you've gone um, to the dance competition um, and previous pictures, mementos, maybe you want to draw pictures, and maybe you want to write memories of um, those events and those special moments and the things that you were thankful for that happened and the friends you've met and things of that um, nature. I know a lot of our um, Kids love technology and um, virtual and videos and photos. So maybe it's not a physical memory box. Um, maybe you make a picture collage that you set in a video to music. Um, so think about those events that you're missing um, or that are special to you and make some type of memorial to them, some type of memory to that. And um, I think that's something that you would treasure for always. And even next summer when we're back to those events, um, you have this to look back on as, you know, that summer you missed it or that time in our life where we were in the pandemic, um, this is something that was special that helped us kind of process those feelings and talk about it. And so um, one more idea that I have that um, would be great for families to do is um, to share memories on strips of paper. And so you just write a bunch of questions, you cut them up, and you stick them in a box. And so you just pass them around the table and everybody picks a question and then you just answer it. And so some of the examples I have is name three things that you miss about school. Now, some students are like, oh, I don't miss anything about school. I'm so glad I'm out. But, you know, it's surprising. You may think that, oh, I don't like school and I don't like getting up early. But now that it's not there, now that we've gone on so long, there are a lot of things that we miss. Um, and then there are those students who really enjoy it, who love learning, who love being there, um, and they've immediately missed it from day one. And so some other ideas. Name one new thing you've learned through distant learning. I know we could all name several things, but talk about one thing. Talk about it in detail. Talk about why you um, enjoyed learning it, maybe how you're going to use it again. Uh, name two things that have been difficult. We've all um, had some difficult things, whether it be just the emotions of reacting to things or physically um, having a difficult situation to go through. Maybe your family has um, an essential worker, and it's been very difficult to have that person out of your home um, for so much of the day. Maybe it's been very difficult for you to stay in touch with your teachers. Maybe you had a lot of technology issues and challenges, um, and that was difficult for you. So talk about that. Name someone you really miss not being able to see right now. Um, all of us are sheltering in place. There's so many of us. Um, I know I haven't seen my dad, um, gosh, since probably the 1st of March, um, which was around his birthday, and that's very difficult. Um, I won't tell my age, but I'm old, and um, I've never in my life been away, from, you know, not seen my dad for that length of time, and it's very difficult, and we talk on the phone, and we do a Zoom. Um, it's not the same. It's not the same as getting a hug from my dad, and so um, I know all of you can have at least one person, if not several people, that you really would like to see right now that you miss. Um, what's the first place you want to go when it's safe? This would be an awesome question and um, a fun thing to talk about, too. So when you put all these questions in a box and you have your family sitting around, um, not only does it lead to great discussions, but you learn about yourself, about others, and you're processing your grief. You're talking about it. You're talking about your feelings. You're doing so many things in a healthy way. Um, you know, getting back to there's no right or wrong or good or bad feeling. You know, if you're feeling frustrated, that's a human response. Um, that's quite okay. It's how we respond to it. So when you're feeling frustrated, maybe you want to write a poem about it. Um, that's a healthy way to deal with it. Um, an unhealthy way to deal with it is maybe put your fist through the wall. You know, so it's not about the feeling. It's about how we're responding. And so it's so important that we reach out and we talk to people. Um, we process our emotions. For some of us, these activities sound great. For um, others, it may be like, mm, yeah, that's not really my thing. That's not really going to help. So what is your thing? Is it going out into the driveway and playing basketball? Is it picking up your guitar and playing a song that you love? Maybe it's writing a new song. Maybe it's just listening to music. Maybe it's getting on a chat with a friend. Um, maybe it's taking a bike ride around the neighborhood if it's safe. Um, so what is it that is kind of your go-to. Um, 
I love journals and writing about our feelings. Some people don't like that. Um, you know, is it yoga? Is it meditation? Uh, maybe it is a good nap. You know, we don't want to sleep our pandemic away and, and be in bed for a week. But, you know, sometimes a really good nap changes your outlook on a lot of things. Um, and so find those things, find those activities, and reach out to people as well. Here are a few resources that I can give you that you can use during the pandemic. Um, one is your school counselor. Um, definitely reach out to them if you haven't um, connected with them yet. I know I have a Google Classroom. I know that looks different at every grade level how we're reaching out um, to our students. Full Circle um, is our grief and loss um, counseling service through Hospice Savannah. And I do know that they are still taking appointments by telephone. And um, our website is National Alliance for Grieving Children. This is an awesome website that a lot of counselors in our district um, refer to and get ideas for activities from. Um, and so these are just a few. And um, I would encourage you that if you and your family are still struggling after you're doing some of these activities, after, you, after you've started talking about it and opening up about it, um, that you continue to reach out because there are resources still available um, and still open during the pandemic. Your school counselor, the best way to get in touch with them is through email, and their email is their first name dot last name at sccpss.com. If you're not sure what their full legal name is, you can check your school's website, um, but I also know that many of you are in constant contact with your teachers, and your teachers can definitely get you in touch with your counselors. Um, so I know many of you know us by our last name, and so you may not know our first name, so be sure and... Um, reach out to them as well. I am going to end with just a few quotes about loss, um, just as a reminder that we will um, get through this. Grief is a journey. Um, no one will be the same after we come out of this, and I hope that um, we can say we've learned a lot um, that is positive. We've learned a lot about ourselves. We've learned a lot about each other. We've learned a lot about resilience, uh, patience, and um, adapting to change but also how do we handle loss? And uh, hopefully when loss comes in the future, and undoubtedly it will, um, some of these resources and ideas um, you'll be reminded of and you can use. And um, all of us will experience death of loved ones. Um, unfortunately, there will be other losses in our lives, hopefully minimal. Um, but it's just human nature. It's just the way life is when it comes to family changes, moves, disappointments, um, you know, maybe it's the loss of a friend that's moving, the loss of a pet who dies. Um, so loss is just one of these things as humans we have to um, work through sometimes. And so I would hope that you're able to learn a few things and take some things away today that you can kind of stick in your pocket. And when you're feeling that way and you can say, hey, you know what? I now know what I feel. I feel grief. I'm grieving a loss of something. Um, grief is not just when we lose someone. It's when we lose something as well. And so I appreciate your time and sticking with me, um, even though I I didn't have all my fun props for today. I actually had a book I would have loved to read to you. Um, so hopefully when we do get back to school, reach out to your school counselor and say, you know what, I saw this lesson on grief and maybe I'm still grieving. Um, I think for a lot of us, it's going to take a lot of time to process this grief and um, we're going to take this um, on our journey for a long time. And so reach out to those counselors when you get back to school and say, I want to talk about it. I want to talk about what I felt when we weren't here. I want to talk about how my family um, did or did not respond well um, and continue to process that grief and loss and continue to talk about it with your friends and teachers because it is normal. It's a new normal for all of us. Um, and I hope you um, are successful in that and you reach out to where you need to. And I hope you all continue to stay safe, stay in touch with your teachers and counselors till the end of the school year on May 15th. Um, have a great summer, and we look forward to seeing you when school returns.